everybody, Gina DeLuca here. Okay, I am gonna be doing another one of these spiral straight bores, uh, vortex, whatever you wanna call it, um, the Fibonacci pour. I love the effect that I'm getting in the centers where I'm getting that perfect spiral. The last one came out kinda wonky. It, it wasn't a perfect spiral like the one before it. Um, don't know if that is just because my surface isn't level and it was spreading out kind of weird. If it was that particular canvas, maybe it was a little bit warped. Maybe it was how I was pouring. Maybe I was pouring a little heavier in some spots than others. I'm not sure. Um, I reviewed the, uh, the replay Still not sure, not sure exactly why that happened. So I'm just gonna shoot for that perfect spiral again. And the colors that I'm using, I have this custom made green, which is the Liquitex Basics Thalo Green with a Liquitex Basics Titanium White. Just a touch of white added to that really brightens it up a lot. And then this color is that same green mixed with the Deco Art Americana Decor Satin Enamel in pure white. This is a wonderful cell maker. This is how you get your cloud pours. So this is going to be kind of cloud pour-ish. Uh, I'm only using one satin enamel. If I were using two satin enamel colors, I would definitely be getting big puffy clouds. Um, that's not what I'm going for. I mean, yes, I want big puffy cells, but I am using um, the Deco Art Americana Decor Metallics in soft gold and in copper. So I want there to be some of that, you know, nice fluffy cloud cell. But I want a lot of this metallic action going on. And that's where I can get those bolder cells is when you have two of the metallics mixed together. So two metallics mixed together can give you boulders and two scent enamels mixed together can give you clouds. You can still get clouds with just one color, but the ones that have the most depth have two colors in them. It kind of creates this shadow highlight effect. So I'm actually using this color green and I will be pouring the scent enamel into the green, hoping for some of that to blend together. And that will create some depth to the cells that I get from the scent enamels. Hopefully, doesn't always go to plan. Sometimes it goes exactly as you planned. Sometimes it goes way better than planned. That was two paintings ago, way better than planned. I'm gonna roll the dice and go for a way better than planned today. These paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. And then that mixture is thinned with my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is. It's about a two on my consistency scale. It does make a mound, but it disappears pretty quickly. And it makes a nice thin stream off of your stick. Nice, thin, even stream. If it is not flowing evenly off of your stick, it is either not mixed properly or you kind of, the, the ratio may be off. Um, and sometimes just uh, cheap paints don't mix very well sometimes. But that is the goal, is to get a nice thin stream off of your stick. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but 
If you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all the information that you need, the exact paint brands, colors, consistency, recipe, and of course, how to do it. This is the picture of that particular video. This box here contains a tip for that particular technique. And here at the bottom, we have the color palette that was used in that painting. And these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, uh, or you can build off of those colors. There are also eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. Use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net and also at amazon.com. And if you get them from Amazon, please do leave feedback. Uh, it is very helpful to the sellers over yonder. All right, before I put down my base coat, I am going to put some paint in my pouring cup. I wanna make sure that I have enough to do my straight pour. I have, in the past, uh, over poured on my base coat and then wound up a bit short in my cup. So, you know, I like taking out various forms of insurance on my on my uh, paintings. I cover the edges of my paintings so that I don't have any canvas showing through. Straight pours, the way that I mix them, and with flow trawl in particular, isn't necessarily the best for covering the edges. Um, in order to get the boulder cells, it has to be pretty thin. And that doesn't lead to great coverage on the sides. So I will paint it first, paint the sides first with whatever my base coat color is going to be so that I don't have to do it after the painting has dried. Especially if you're using custom colors like this is. Just getting that perfect shade again would be a challenge. Certainly not impossible. I actually find it fun to uh, try to color match things, but I don't wanna have to do it here. <laughs> so this is just an insurance policy. And also, and it's, it's an insurance policy for your composition. By laying down a base coat, it lets your poured paint slide around more easily. And something has to stick to the canvas first, right? So do you want that to be your base coat or part of the puddle that you pour? And then if it's the puddle that you pour, Whatever's on the edges, you're going to lose. And sometimes that is where the coolest stuff happens. Okay, so the order that I'll be putting these in, typically what happens is the last color that I put in, there will be a tiny bit left of it, uh, a tiny bit left in the bottom of the cup. And then that winds up being my center. So, you know, I have to decide Satchmo was taken to China. Uh, I have to decide if I want it to be the gold or the copper. I feel like the copper has more contrast with the green. So I'm gonna go with the copper. Sometimes I'll go with the lightest color, um, depending on the combination that I'm using, but the copper and the green, it's just, they're just so magical together. Um, you might be getting sick of, the <laughs> of this combination, but I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not sick of it yet. Okay. 
So I'm going to pour from up high. Always check your consistency before you pour it into your cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing. Pouring from up high so it sinks and blends. And it really does like to come up to the top pretty quickly. And then I will do the gold next. Okay, you're looking good. Again, when you hear that plop, you know you got some velocity going. That's, that's what we want. So even if one paint is more dense than another, still has a chance to get in there and churn just because you have that gravity working for you. Okay, good to go. Groovy. And I have reserved a bit of my background color. Background color is the first color that goes in the cup. I like to make my background color the same color as my base coat. It does not have to be. I just like it that way because I can get some negative space going if I so desire. All right, so I'm going to pour somewhat quickly while spinning slowly. Actually, let me pop these bubbles, these bubbles in the base coat, get rid of those. If you don't get rid of it now, it will pop up through your pour later. Also another reason why I make my background and base coat the same color. If I do get tiny little pin cells, I wouldn't want them to be white. There's no white in this cup. So if I used a white background and white was coming up through my pour, I'd be very bummed. Okay. Slowly spinning clockwise and pouring somewhat quickly. This will help to accentuate the spiral. If you spin too quickly, it's just going to look like a ring pour. And I really want to accentuate the spiral aspect of it. And the closer I get to the end of the cup, the closer I will get to the canvas. It gives me more control. Waiting for that copper to come out. Here it comes. I at least want to get one and a half turns in there. That's kind of the Fibonacci. And I messed up the dismount. Oh, shame, shame. Boo. Okay. Okay, and this one is not appearing quite as round as I would like it. So I'm going to try to even that out before I spin. Mm. 
gently. I don't want to mess up my center. It is looking pretty cool. I'm just trying to get it evenly distributed on the edges. But I want my center to stay the center. So I'm trying to be very careful. That's why I'm doing this so very slowly. I do not want my center to get wonky. Okay. I gotta keep this moving because this is not level. The bubbles that I am Paul. I see schmutz. Hold the phone. Where'd it go? It's a good thing I was very good at the game operation when I was a kid. <laughs> it prepared me for this. Who knew that that was my preparation for my future career? Not as a doctor, but as a schmutz grabber. So, the bubbles that I am popping, as they are coming up, it is bringing some of the paint underneath with it. And these paints have a hydrophobic effect. It pushes away um, the glossier paints. Matte paints will sell when uh, used in a straight pour. And so it pushes the other paints away and it gets bigger. If they were not paints that had a hydrophobic effect, if it was just a regular old paint, if it was white paint under there, um, just plain white paint, those little cells will just stay like the size of pinheads. But because these have a hydrophobic effect, they just keep pushing the other paints away and the cells get bigger. And you can see here in the center, I mean, let's be honest, the center is what matters <laughs> most on this because that is the focal point. And it's what happens at the end of the cup that makes this magical. I mean, that was that last little turn, basically. So everything that's happening here on the edge will get stretched out. And these cells that are popping up and here, they will get bigger when they get stretched and they will get bigger just because they're pushing the other paints away. But this is why we stay patient. And I'm not really torching the center because I don't want th anything to interrupt that. The nice thing about using Floetrol and mixing it like this thin is if there are bubbles left in my painting, they don't make pits. It doesn't pit, you know, like another pouring medium might, something that sets up quicker and glossy. Um, if there, are, you know, if I use Liquitex pouring medium and I don't torch it, I will wind up with pits in the paint where the bubbles are. But that does not happen when I mix it for a straight pour and use Floetrol. 
So when I'm torching, I'm torching to pop the bubbles so it brings up those cells from the layers underneath. And that's why it's important to be patient in a straight pour because the cells that I pop up and allow to get bigger when I stretch them, they will be even bigger. Um, but if I stretch it quickly and then they pop up later, that's how you get the pearl cells, which are pretty uniform in size. Um, I call them pop-up cells because they pop up later. They're not um, part of the initial uh, composition. They, they kind of show up later. Okay. All right. I think it's time to give it a spin. And I'm actually going to just touch up these corners because they can set up a little bit if you're being patient. They may set up on you a bit. It's kind of a good way to know if you're being patient enough. <laughs> this will just help move it along a little better. Nice. Nice and fresh. Okay. All right, one more torch and then, then we spin. All right, let's get busy. And you do not have to spin fast. It's, this does not This does not have to go fast to be effective. My, my drip line is within the uh, diameter of this. It doesn't go out is what I'm trying to say. There's no need to be flinging this on your walls. You know, and the nice thing about spinning slowly is you can kind of keep an eye on what's happening and make adjustments if you need it. don't 
want to lose too much of that copper. Okay. These corners are bumming me out. I know I'm very quiet. I'm I'm thinking very hard while I'm doing this. I really don't want to lose more of that copper. Oh, Bigsby, I don't know what you want, my love. I always make sure there's food before I start with the uh, pouring because he's very talkative. I think he just uh, can see the bottom of his bowl and that really, that's not his jam. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Well, that looks better than what it did look like. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to let this sit and I will likely have more cells popping up. So I'm gonna let this do what it's gonna do and I will bring you in for a close-up. Back in a few. 
Okay, here it is. Got some cool multicolored cells going on here. Funky little combo of colors with the green and the copper and gold. The way that they blend together. I'm not angry at this. The center came out very nicely. Cannot, uh, can't be angry at that. Yeah. Well, there it is. Uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like and share and subscribe. If you are subscribed, and are not getting notifications, make sure you click that bell. That is uh, something that changed within YouTube, and if you don't click the bell, you don't get the notifications. And yeah, so make sure you do that. For all of the people that you want to follow, do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar, if you feel so inclined. My website, GinaDeLuga.net, where you can find my art and music and the fluid art inspiration cards for sale. And of course, the cards are also on Amazon. And also, all of my affiliate links, Deco Art and Arteza Color Art, that's where you will find the coupon codes as well. Get yourself a 20% off deco art coupon code and you can make your very own funky Nautilus. And also in the description box, you will find the link to our Facebook group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. You know. But uh, I think that's it. I think that's everything. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art. <laughs>